Now what I want to do is show you the tools and materials that I use. And first we'll talk about analog tools. So first here I've got this marker paper. And the thing I like about marker paper is it has a really nice tooth to it. So it's really good for marker. It's also good for pencil and sketching. And it's also good for pens. And the other benefit is it's semi-translucent. And you can use it almost like a tracing paper to draw over. So instead of using a light table, this is a good option. The next thing I have is sketch paper. Now, I'm not really particular with the kind of sketch paper I use. This is just a nice pad and it's pretty cheap. The other kind of paper that I'll use is just regular inkjet paper, just because it's cheap, really good for sketching on. Not necessarily good for final drawings, but just sketching. And speaking of sketching, I'm really into sketchbooks and changing up my sketchbook, changing up the size and the brand and the color. I think that actually adds to creativity. And I'm a big fan of Aaron Draplin's Field Notes. I've just got these house eco journals, kind of the same thing, very similar, uh, very nicely designed. This is a Ogami notepad that I got from my friend Bryce's shop up in Seal Beach. This is really nice. And then this is the latest sketchbook I've been using. And it's handmade in India. And the paper is, it's kind of a canvassy rough paper. And I like this because it's forced me to loosen up my sketches. Because the paper is so rough, you just, you know, you can't really do a tight drawing. So that's a good thing. And as far as pens, my go-to pen are these Muji 0.38 black pens. These are really great for any kind of sketching or putting in lines. I also like these Copic multi-liners. There's also the Micron pens, which are very similar. I have a 0.5 and then a 0.8 that's a little thicker. These are good for laying down really nice, precise lines. And in the past, I had trouble with these because a lot of times I like to put a lot of pressure down when I'm drawing. And when you're drawing with these, you actually don't need a lot of pressure. So that's just a little tip you can use. As far as markers, I use one marker and it's a Prismacolor black marker. The thing I like about this is it's a water-based solvent so you don't get any fumes. And this pen has a really small nib on it, and on the other end, it's got more of like a wide chisel tip to it. The other thing I really like are these Prismacolor PC935 pencils. These are the Prismacolor pencils without the erasers. The color erase ones I find you can't put down as dark a color, so I like these because you can shade really finely, or you can really put down just dark black pencil. So these are really good. And these work well with the marker paper. I've also got kind of a novelty pencil here. It's a general sketch and wash. It's a watercolor pencil. So you can dip it in water, or you can draw with it and then sort of brush water over it. And you can get all kinds of cool different effects. And I'll show you how to use this a little later. Here I've got an assortment of paintbrushes, and these are just the cheapest paintbrushes you can get. We're not looking to get too fancy with painting, but these are good with India ink, and they're good with acrylic ink, and they're also good with using with the watercolor pencils. And here I've got Liquitex black ink. It's very similar to India ink, and I've got some Dr. Martin's transparent watercolor. The X-Acto number one knife is really good for cutting stencils and cutting paper. Cheapy pencil sharpener. And here I've got a Papermate Pro Touch 2 mechanical pencil. This is a 0.5 thickness. And I don't get too particular with my mechanical pencils, but this is a good one. And the last analog tool I have is a Pantone solid coated color guide. And this is a range of colors, much like the colors you'd find in Home Depot in the paint aisle. But this will let you spec out your colors for your t-shirt designs. 
and I'll show you how to use this in a later section. Now let's go on to digital tools. Okay, let's talk about digital tools. I think one thing you can do is get carried away and spend too much money in the wrong places. I recommend to kind of keep it basic and spend your money on really good basic essential digital tools. Number one would be your computer. I use a 27 inch iMac so it's got the 27 inch screen built in and I think that's a really good screen size. You know if you're trying to work off a, a laptop you're gonna have problems because the screen real estate is just a lot smaller. So if you're working off a laptop I would recommend thinking about purchasing a larger screen that you can plug into it and that's just going to help your productivity and I think your creativity too. There's nothing wrong with PCs. I just think if you have the choice, Macintosh is a little bit nicer interface for a designer. There's a lot of production designers and a lot of screen printers actually that use PCs. And I think that's because the color separation software, a lot of that is on PC only. So if you have the choice, I would say go Mac. But... PC is fine too. Now as far as software goes, I would recommend Adobe Creative Cloud. You get Photoshop and Illustrator and then a bunch of other Adobe programs, but Photoshop and Illustrator are sort of the main things you need for t-shirt design. Now there's a lot of other graphic design software out there, but I think if you're just starting out and you haven't picked a software yet, definitely go with Adobe Creative Cloud. You can also use Typekit, which gives you access to fonts online through Adobe. I think you'll also want to have access to a scanner and an inkjet printer. Now, I think any scanner or printer made by Epson or HP in the last five years is totally fine. Another digital tool that I use a lot is a camera. A lot of times it's just my iPhone because you end up seeing something that you weren't planning. You can take a photo of it right then and there. A lot of the graphics I do are with iPhone photos, but you also want a camera that has a lot more control. And you might want to think about getting an SLR, which is a replaceable lens camera. So you can change out the lenses from like a telephoto to a fisheye lens, giving all kinds of different effects. You have a lot more control over the lighting and the image quality is a lot better. Now, with a camera, you don't necessarily need to spend a ton because there's a lot of old digital cameras out there that are pretty good price. Now, by old, I'm saying, you know, three, four, five-year-old cameras. And I use a Canon 7D. That's actually what I'm using to record this video right now. But I also take that on trips and take photos with that. The key with an SLR is you're going to pick a brand. So you're going to pick like a Nikon or a Canon or a Sony and each one of those has its own lenses. So just do your research on camera bodies and the nice thing is if you ever want to upgrade your camera body you still got all those really nice lenses to use. That's it for the basic digital tools. There's other things you can get like drawing tablets but I would caution you don't get too caught up in purchasing really expensive digital equipment because I don't think it'll really save you that much time. Now if your business is doing really well and you decide that you want a drawing tablet, that's great. There's a couple different ways you can go. Wacom Cintiqs are really good drawing tablets, but if you're also in the market for an iPad, you might want to look at the iPad Pro. You can match it up with the Apple Pencil. There's an app called AstroPad that'll link to what's on your main computer screen. So if you're using Photoshop, you can draw right into Photoshop on your iPad. That's a nice feature, but again, you really don't need it. Anything you can do on a drawing tablet, you can also do on a piece of paper with a scanner. So that's it for digital tools. Now, there's a lot of options out there for software and for computers, but these are the tools that I use and these are the tools that I trust. These are also the tools that my designer friends use and just use the right tools and they'll serve you well.